Danielle Ray Miller's artworks feature the complexity of nature's interconnections. Nature has been really important in my life. I remember when I was really young, some of the first moments of being very aware of the natural world and laying in my backyard in an early summer day and just looking up through the trees, seeing the spaces of blue sky between branches and green leaves, just sort of having this awe for that. Is that what inspired your Dryades series? I've come back to trees at various moments throughout my life, but that series definitely kind of came from that. For me, trees are, they're kind of like, almost like creatures. It's sort of a silly thing maybe, but I kind of think of them as like these ancient beings that are just kind of rooted to the ground. And they, they have this kind of very, very slow movement. And even something like a heartbeat where water kind of pumps up through the roots mm. into the trees. In some of your work, there's sort of a tension between the different species or subjects. Mm -hmm. Is there a mythological or narrative aspect? Stories are one of the kind of key things for me. So the Dryades series is named after wood nymphs in, in Greek culture. And the paintings are all named after different Greek stories where a person or creature of some kind was transformed into a tree. I know in your Hungering series, you also feature, there's a lot of snakes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, snakes. Which yeah. freaks me out a little, freaks out a lot of people yeah, actually. Yeah. But they're, they play a, a lot of roles in mythology. Mm -hmm. There are stories across culture that deal with animals of different kinds, birds, snakes. Snakes just, yeah, they, we seem to have some kind of human reaction to snakes. Starts in the, the Hungering series for sure. In that series, I was just first experience in motherhood. And so I think that is one of those places where the interconnectedness of me to broader structures really starts to become solid and obvious. So there's mothering a child, the child that grows inside you, and then how that child is part of a larger community and all that sort of stuff. But then there's just kind of the neediness of the child and your parent and you have to kind of deal with that neediness. So I built this series around that idea of, of that just kind of like that, that interaction between parent and child or human to human, that sort of need, but I was doing it symbolically. So I chose carnivorous plants, snakes, I used baby bird mouths as kind of the key elements to kind of get across that sense of like things are really hungry mm. in, in this world. And I dent, packed the compositions in really densely because it was overwhelming, you know, overwhelming to kind of deal with another human being's need. And as I worked on the series over years, more snakes came in and, and <laughs> <laughs> in part they broke up the composition, but in part they just became these characters in a story, like a narrative story. and the snakes would interact with the carnivorous plants. There's one where the snake starts to kind of peek into a pitcher plant and it's curious about what's in there, but then the pitcher plant itself is sort of sitting there, but is it dangerous? Is it gonna provide food? Is it, you know, what, what really is going on between these? And, and uh, I started thinking about coevolution, interaction between species which then sort of becomes symbolic for kind of overpopulation in general, just like the way that we are so packed onto this planet now and this kind of competition for resources across the board, the way resources are sort of being limited, which then goes back to motherhood, right? So it gets real complicated. Being a person who finds so much solace in nature the work kind of goes back to and, and reflects and deals with nature as this primary source. And as we experience that kind of source in nature, like there does become the fear of its loss, right? Mm -hmm. So we can see even in New Mexico how 
how hot it is, how little rain we've had this season, and what that will mean for even just the things that grow in my own yard, what it means for the bosque, what it means for the Rio Grande River, what it means for you know every other thing that's connected to that. Can you talk about how you used patterns in vivarium, why, why that was important? As I started to uh, kind of look at the images and the species and the elements that I wanted to use, I was just noticing like these layers of things that were so similar. So the similarity between the snake skin and the dragonfly wing and the, the veins and the leaf, those images are layered together on the two sides of a sort of transparent vellum and looking at those patterns sort of interweave became just fascinating to me and delightful you know both visually delightful but then kind of tying back into that idea of symbolism the way that ties us all together the human bone patterns or the you know the veins and arteries that move through the human heart and how they're connected to or look like root systems under the ground. I think that's really key. Like, I want the work to be non-verbal representation of that kind of interconnectedness. Hmm. I wanted it to feel like interconnectedness. Maybe even some ways that we can't immediately verbalize. Why are symbols and mythologies important? It ties us to something that is older than we are, that's older than this moment, mm -hmm. that connects to other cultures, to other ways of thinking about things, seeing things, understanding them. And I think rather than looking at something from a purely maybe scientific way, where we analyze and break it apart and separate from it, I think what happens with symbolism is we find more layered meaning to it and more kind of connection and more magic too for me. I've always loved stories. So those stories and the symbols of those stories then kind of reflected into objects or materials give for me artwork like an additional meaning. And it's calling on a large structure of past experiences and past knowledge, past images, sort of layers of experience, braiding it all together and hoping to kind of ask questions, you know? And that's like, I don't think I have specific questions in mind, but I would hope that it leaves people with questions rather than answers. I find that to be maybe more useful for humans. <laughs>